I hope this lighting is alright. It was so sunny this morning when I started recording a load of videos and now I'm just looking out the window and it's just so miserable and grey. But you know, the show must go on. Hi! So today I'm going to be talking about a book um, as you have probably already seen from the title is this, The Hand, the Eye and the Heart by Zoe Marriott and I'm also going to be kind of diving into a little bit of a discussion about um, one of the themes that has come up recently that is seen as a little bit controversial. Um, I'm just going to try and uh, weigh in a little bit as much as I can um, on what I think of the kind of uh, controversialness, controversy, that's the word, <laughs> surrounding this book. So let's start with a little bit of a kind of summary of the book. So this book is about someone who was assigned female at birth, so she was born female and uh, despite having a gift for illusions she can basically turn herself um, into someone else. Um, she can kind of either make people think she's invisible or she can uh, have a new face. She kind of lives life within the confines of the women's quarter um, in her home and she has a lot of the kind of traditionally female jobs so like she helps her mum with um, sewing and weaving and cooking and looking after the kids and things um, which she's not happy with. So this is basically um, like a Mulan, almost like a Mulan retelling and she wants to help her father who is kind of, he's getting a little bit old and uh, she, he's kind of conscripted because they have no sons or the only son that I think they have is like a kid, he's like 10 or something. Her dad is conscripted for the war and she wants to help him out um, by basically not sending him off to war because she's kind of scared he's not going to come back. So she decides to disguise herself as a man and tell them that they do actually have a son and she can go off to war instead of him. So yeah, she basically has to try and survive all of this really brutal army training um, as a boy while trying to conceal the fact that um, underneath she's uh, kind of, she looks like a girl, she was born a girl. So there's a lot to unpack in this book. There are so many themes like uh, trans issues and kind of sexuality issues and all of these different things. Um, so I'm going to try and pick it apart. So I love the story of this. Straight away when I got it, I read this for a blog tour and my job for the blog tour, I'll link it below, was to put together a kind of mood board, um, kind of like an aesthetic mood board for the book. So I was reading it quite kind of in depth so I could get some ideas for this mood board so I could get together some good images and things that I think well represent the book. One thing I loved straight away was how atmospheric it all is and all the descriptions are so good and they make you kind of perfectly imagine the world inside this book which was great for me. Now despite me not being a huge reader of fantasy I really enjoyed this because it's not like super high fantasy. Um, it's still set in a fantasy land that's kind of based on uh, like Chinese culture um, but it's not massively fantasy so for me it was the perfect balance of kind of realism and fantasy and it made me really enjoy it because I didn't have to try and get into this really high fantasy world. So the descriptions of things as I said are so good that I could clearly picture everyone down to their clothes, um, the way that they kind of all travelled, the places they all stayed while they were um, at their army training. I could clearly imagine kind of all of the quarters that they lived in and yeah I love a book that has descriptions that are so good and so vivid that you can kind of really clearly imagine how the writer was picturing things as they wrote them. Another thing I love in books um, and why I'm such a fan of people like Lauren James is that I love a good plot twist. This book had so many good plot twists that I just didn't see coming, um, especially towards the end. It was just twisting and turning everywhere and I don't think I expected... Uh, I, th I think there was one big twist that they kind of alluded to earlier 
Um, so I kind of guessed that when it happened, but I think that's not really supposed to be a big shock. But there were a couple more things that happened that were constantly just twisting and turning. And I love to be kind of taken on a roller coaster when I read a book, so I love a good twist that I can kind of get right into. This kind of explores the themes of gender and sexuality um, quite in depth. I did kind of expect um, because I went into it knowing that there were kind of like trans themes throughout it, I did kind of expect it to be a little bit, little bit more explicit in those themes. Uh, it didn't really mention, I know it was probably because it's meant to be a kind of period style um the words like trans and things probably wouldn't be used but i kind of expected a little bit more of that to kind of clearly explain like you kind of guessed based on the character's thoughts and things that she wasn't happy kind of like in her body but i mean she was still being called she throughout it and she referred to herself as she and I'm pretty sure she did anyway. Um, please tell me if I'm wrong in any of these. But um, yeah, I kind of thought that they'd be a little bit more clear, like the, the kind of trans themes. But even so, um, the themes that are there um, were kind of really interesting to read and they were all woven into the plot really well. So yeah, overall, the story of this, I really loved. Um, like I got on board with it straight away and um, if you want to see kind of some of the aesthetic kind of mood board pieces that I picked out then you can look at my blog post, I'll link it in the description. Um, it's just so atmospheric and I loved the story and I loved all of the characters and yeah it's just it was a really good book. Like there were a few issues with it like I was saying about how the themes and things uh, I had a little bit of an issue with but um, Overall, it was, I really enjoyed it and I kind of put it down thinking that that was a really good book and I loved it. Um, and also, like, it's such a beautiful cover, like, look at it, it's just so pretty. However, and this is where the big however comes into it, um, after I finished reading it, probably maybe a week after I finished reading it, when the book was properly released, because um, my blog tour was... Um, a little bit before the book's release. Um, when the book was released properly, I started seeing a lot of controversy appearing about this book and people, um, particularly people of colour, saying they weren't happy with the representation. And I was a bit confused because, I mean, it's hard really to talk about it because as from the perspective of a white person living in... Um, like a decent place and like I admit I'm like extremely privileged. It's hard to talk about the controversial themes as someone who doesn't really experience them. So I had to talk to some people. Um, I'm in a big uh, like Discord server with loads of other UK bloggers and we ended up having a huge discussion about this book. Um, and I had to try and, it was a big learning curve for me, I had to try and learn about why this book was so controversial because I kind of didn't really understand. After I read it, I was like, oh, well, I didn't think the the representation was really, like, harmful in any way. Oh, so it was, yeah, it was a, it was a big learning curve. Basically, I think one of the main issues that people had with this book is that the author is white. Zoe Marriott is a white author and people were seeing her writing this book as kind of appropriating Asian culture. And I've never read a Zoe Marriott book before. I've never really seen, uh, before this I hadn't really heard of her before. I didn't know anything about her previous books. So it turns out that all of her previous books, I think all of them or nearly all of them, um, are also rooted in this kind of like Asian or Chinese culture and people are kind of seeing her as appropriating the culture for her books when she's like a white author which I now totally understand. There's such a big kind of issue at the moment with publishing especially kind of young adult publishing 
not being very diverse and especially in the UK as well. I can't really talk for the US or any other country um, because obviously I'm in the UK but it's been an issue for a while that UK publishing is not very diverse at all. Like it's very white, it's very kind of um, privileged and so basically a lot of diverse people aren't getting their chances to have their stories released into the world. Uh, a lot of the successful authors are all kind of white authors um, and you don't get a lot of authors of colour getting the same level of success um, as white authors and this is why people like Angie Thomas are incredible um, and they're releasing their stories or stories that are close to their heart and they can kind of relate to a lot and these books are getting a lot of success um, and that's so good but it's not just a couple of books isn't enough like there's publishing is so white <laughs> and with with a book like this where it's a white author and she creates this whole kind of Asian landscape and this whole kind of fantasy culture that's rooted in Asian culture. It kind of takes away from people who are actually part of that minority being able to create their own stories based on their own culture that they've experienced and it's not kind of appropriating someone else's culture. Whew, so yeah it's it's a bit of an issue. Um, so one thing that I've kind of struggled with is whether I can say that knowing about the controversial aspects of this book have changed my opinion on like how much I enjoyed the story and how much I kind of liked reading it because obviously finding out if I knew about all of this before I read the book I would probably have seen it a little bit differently I kind of would have read it with a more critical eye because I would have known about all this but because I read the book before all of this happened um, or before all of this kind of came out and I learned more about it and I had to try and discuss with people why it was controversial. I really loved the story so it's really hard to kind of love a story and then almost try and have to detach yourself from it because you know that it could be harmful to a lot of people. Um, so it's kind of launched a big discussion and a lot of thoughts kind of in my head about whether I should just try and detach myself from books like this and kind of be on the side of those who find it harmful. I don't want this to kind of feel like I'm just saying oh well I like the book so there stuff it because that's definitely not what I'm saying. I really don't want to be kind of one of those ignorant people who just thinks um, oh well it doesn't affect me so I'm not gonna let it affect me. Do you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it's hard to kind of put into words. I really feel like I should have scripted this but I just wanted to wanted it to be kind of like my uh, actual thoughts as I'm kind of thinking them. So as I said whether the kind of controversy affects how much I enjoyed the story I can't really say that it does because I still enjoyed the story a lot um, and I feel like it's kind of important to point out as well that I knew absolutely nothing about Zoe Marriott. Like when I read this book she could have been an Asian author for all that I knew. So I didn't really read the book with a critical eye. Uh, I just kind of read it knowing that I had to do this blog tour and I was looking for kind of like the atmospheric elements and ended up really loving the story. So yeah I don't know really where to go from here. Um, I'd love if you could kind of tell me what you think about this um, and also more importantly please give me some uh, diverse book recommendations because I think just as I was saying like UK publishing is really white um, most of the books on my shelves are probably by white authors and it, I think it would be really interesting for me to look at my shelves and kind of find out a bit about all of the authors that I have on my shelf um, and see how diverse my collection actually is um, and I would love to kind of diversify my collection a little bit more so if you've got any good diverse book recommendations by like minority authors then please tell me because I really want to read them I want to add them to my list and try and read them whenever I get chance to um, let me know what you think about uh, what you thought about this book when you read it and also about kind of all the 
controversial themes surrounding it. What do you think? Um, I'd love to have a proper discussion in the comments. So um, I hope this hasn't come out as just one big ramble. Um, I tried to get my thoughts uh, into this video as well as I could. Um, and also I haven't talked about a book yet. Uh, this is my first video on this channel where I'm kind of talking about a book. Uh, all of them have just been about books in general. Um, so I'll probably, it'll take a bit of practice for me to kind of start to get my thoughts out without just rambling for 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, please let me know what you think and um, I would love to get a discussion going. So I will see you soon uh, and I hope to do more book reviews um, because I, f I always feel like speaking my thoughts about a book is so much easier than writing them down. Um, so yeah, I'll see you soon. Bye!